Listen to this. Many people make the mistake of interfering with their success mechanism by demanding how before a vision is clearly established. And you know why we do this? I believe from the years I've been working with people, I believe the reason we do this is because we're all trapped in this time context. I don't have time. I I don't have enough time. So when there's an opportunity or we we see something for our lives, we don't want to waste time. And so if I start down this path and I don't know how, wouldn't that be a waste of time, Linnell? Let me tell you something. One of the things that I'm learning, one of the things that I've learned, that ain't learning, I've learned it, okay? Like this lesson is clear to me. That almost everything that I intend to create powerfully happens counterintuitively. Almost everything I intend to create, it happens like right now, I... I can tell you how I created a firm where I'm a strategic advisor to CEO and C-suite leaders. I can tell you how in hindsight. What I can't do is tell you that I knew how when I had the vision. I had no, I had no clue. But when I got the vision, all of a sudden there were signs that said, go here. And so that's what I did. I went in that direction and then the opportunities began to manifest. Is this? Ma- I hope this is making sense. Now, somebody's saying, are you telling us to go blindly? No, 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 no. Anybody in Slayer Goals knows that we, get, we take the goal, we create reverse milestones, right? And for everything that we know how to do, we're taking those actions. But there's always going to be something that you're not, you know, you're not clear about. I just don't know. I'm not clear. Let's continue reading. If you want to be a body, come on, let's talk about it. Change up the things you see. Open your mind to possibilities. Find your power, passion, and purpose. You know it's time for you to walk in greatness. Let's murder mediocrity. Slay your goals, live out your dreams. Now, open your mind to a better life. It's time to live your dreams. Now, let's slay. I want to follow up from last week's conversation on avoiding the how blockade. So what we talked about last week was, you know, really taking the time to aim and focus and aiming more so on the vision. And I want to spend a little more time there in today's conversation, but I really want to talk about now that I'm clear why it's so important that we take action and what gets in the way of that action. So I want to talk about this conversation um, that we had Wednesday night, culture and cash flow, these heavy hitters in the room. I mean, I think we had just about every industry covered. I mean, from banking to law to real estate to insurance to, I mean, you can't like no one could come to me and say, oh, I can't I can't become a millionaire in this industry because I'd be like, well, so and so did it. Like, you know, where I'm going like they, I mean, you have people from technology to artificial intelligence. And by the way, all these people look like us. I mean, you, you get like brothers and sisters who are doing phenomenal things. Nonprofit. I mean, every just almost every sector was was covered. And this question came up, like, well, it actually kicked off. Um, Mac Ross was the, was the host. If you're not familiar with him, 
He's the host of Macronomics and uh, uh, Maconomics and he does a lot of work with supporting uh, Af the African American community with learning how to invest. Um, smart brother, and he was hosting. He was like, you know, what is wealth? What is wealth? So we, you know, people started going around sharing what they believe is wealth. And I heard a lot of answers I've heard before. One particular answer stood out to me, and it came from the sister in banking. And, you know, and so I see like when she started speaking about what she thought wealth is because she's in banking, I was like all ears. And her answer was wealth is liquidity. Wealth is liquidity. And as soon as the word liquidity came out of her mouth, I was like, yes, it is. Wealth is liquidity. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this like that this morning is one, you know, to share and, you know, know that you guys know that this is coming out. But number two, her answer for me extended beyond money. Because when you say like she was speaking from a financial sense that, you know, wealth is liquidity in, in terms of like what she sees as a banker. Um, you have lots of people who likely are fully leveraged, and so they have all these nice things, you know, the home, the the cars, the, you know, they got all this credit. But I'm sure she, in banking, she's seen how quickly that can fall apart for somebody, right? Um, how the economic cycles shift how a person's wealth might, you know, whether they're wealthy right now or not. And so when she said wealth is liquidity, I thought, wow, what a powerful answer. One for the African-American community that often, I, you know, we speaking brother to brother and brother to sister right now. Like, I'm just going to be straight. Like, most of the time, we're putting up facades about our wealth. Like, 80% of the time, the person who is wearing the expensive clothes and driving the expensive car is not wealthy. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons they aren't wealthy is because of what they're wearing and because of what they're driving and because of the home they live in. Like, that's why they're not wealthy, okay? And... When she said liquidity, I thought, wow, that is something that gets right to the root of what gets in our way. Like we want to look wealthy. And so the desire to look wealthy actually trumps and supersedes the desire to be wealthy. Let that. Like, let, let that sit for a moment. Like, I really want you to wrap your mind around what I just said. Because when you think about the African-American community, and we talked about this too, $1.4 trillion on, you know, on paper, like, like that can be tracked, and spending power. Now, mind you, that's spending power. That's not what we have. That's what we spend. OK. We spend close to half or about half of everything we have. When you look at overall African-American wealth, right, maybe three point five. I don't have the exact numbers four trillion. Right. So then there's three point five to four trillion overall. And we're spending one point four, which is really like one point seven because there's cash in the system that's not accounted for right? About $1.7 trillion being spent. So then when you look at our community, where is this money? <laughs> right? And so when she gave the answer that wealth is liquidity, I thought, wow. How many of us are over leveraged because we're focused on the wrong things, right? And here's the other piece, right? Because I want to talk about goal, like taking action on our goals this morning. And 
One of the things that we do to ourselves is we create our own resistance. So I desire financial well-being, right? There's not a person that I've talked to uh, as a coach who, when we get to finances, doesn't have a desire for financial security or financial freedom. And the only clients that don't bring it up are the ones who already have it, right? They're not going, they're not, it's like, hey, my goal, they're not saying my goal for my finances are financial freedom and security because they're like, they already have it. Their goals are, well, my company's at 10 million, I'm trying to get to 20. So then that's their financial goal, okay? Otherwise, almost every other person I support in some way is trying to figure out their money, like their relationship with money, their, you know, the, the steps they need to take with money, financial freedom. And when, when she said wealth is liquidity, I believe, I, I want to share that with you all because, one, I believe that's one of the best answers I've heard um, outside of my own because I, I, still, I still hold that wealth is wisdom, okay? I still hold that. But now I want to add wealth is wisdom and liquidity, <laughs> right? Now, and wealth is liquidity, not just in terms of money. Wealth is liquidity in your health. If wealth, if your health is wealth, how much liquidity do you have in your health? What is liquidity in health, Linnell? Liquidity in health is I can actually get up and walk around, bend down, touch my toes. I can actually exert myself without falling out. Like, I got, I got something I can give physically. You get where I'm going? Ide comes to me and says, hey, man. Um, Can you help me get these boxes over there? Yes, I can. Why? Because I have liquidity in my health. I have, I can actually cash in on my physical ability. Like, can you cash in on your physical abilities? Or are you in physical debt? Like, like I really want us to, like, when she said liquidity, my mind was like, What? Like, because you can, you can apply liquidity in every aspect, in all four pillars. Like, are you liquid? <laughs> like, are you liquid? When it comes to your health and well-being, are you liquid? Do you have liquidity? Some of us can't run around the block. Literally cannot run around the block. We are, we have health debt. Because before you can even run around the block, you're going to have to walk around the block and you can't do that now maybe i should have said trigger alert before i started talking like this but here's the thing somebody's like well my you know linnell at this point my my health is not doing well and i have you know i I have this disease and that disease with love you did it to yourself right like you the same way with finances that somebody would say, oh, well, I'm in debt. Like, who did that? Maybe there's a few who had identity theft, right? They'd be like, somebody else did it to me, right? But, like, for most, for, for most folks, it's like, but you did that. You went to the mall and bought all that stuff that you don't even wear, right? That you're still paying 24 28% on. Like, you did that, right? So... And again, somebody might be like, well, Anil, I thought this was about, you know, taking action and, and, and gaining clarity. It's like, yeah, I want us to get clear on what we should be looking at. Because, I, I mean, I think sometimes, like, so again, when we look at the top ten reasons we don't focus, we go back to that. Number three was avoidance. Number three was avoidance. Distractions, lack of sleep. Number three was avoidance. Like, we, we don't even think about it. Like, we don't even think about our health until the debt is called. Now, doctor's saying, hey, if you don't do this, you got six months. It's like, oh, my goodness. Now I'm in the books. Now I'm looking at the YouTube videos. 
Now my, my refrigerator is full of and, and encounters are full of organic fruits. Right now I'm trying to pay off debt. But what if I were liquid? What if I, what if I kept my health liquid? Liquidity. What about our relationships? Like, can you call in favors? Are your relationships liquid? Could you, could you actually, could you actually, could you raise a hundred thousand? Could you raise, could you raise 50? Could, could you raise 10 just based on your name and your relationships? Could you raise 5,000? Like just call around and say, hey, you know, can I, can I get, can I get 5,000? I'm good for it. I'm good for it. Like, how liquid are you in your relationships? And by the way, relationships aren't just about money. It's also about trust, period. Would somebody do work for you? For pay, by the way. Because they know you will pay. Or it's like, you know, you call, they're like, nah, man, you got to pay me up front. If, 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 if you have to pay people up front, you are not liquid in your relationships, Like this thing, like this whole thing about liquidity, it hit me. I was like, wow, you got to be liquid. Like to live a wealthy lifestyle, you have to be liquid everywhere. I got to be liquid. I got to be able to call somebody and say, hey, can you start working on this before they even send me an invoice? Right? And then when they send the invoice, I can say, I'll pay it once you finish. And they believe me. Like I'm liquid in my relationships. I'm liquid with my word. That's wealth. And and the other thing that hit me about this whole idea of wealth is liquidity is the fact that if if I'm liquid in certain pillars, I can actually leverage that to become liquid in other pillars. And we'll talk about that when I when I start sharing my process for 2024. Are you liquid financially? I read a book years ago, and one of the reasons I knew my wife was my wife was because I gave this book to her um, when we were dating. It's called The Storehouse Principle. And The Storehouse Principle goes back to the time of Joseph when Pharaoh had the dreams uh, about the, um, the cattle, you know, the healthy, fat cattle. Uh, not Joseph, Pharaoh had the dreams. And healthy fat cattle, and then the other, you know, I think it was seven, 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 you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, y'all know the story. But uh, seven healthy fat cattle, and then, you know, seven more that was scrawny came and ate them up. And Pharaoh was like, oh my God, what does this dream mean? Nobody could interpret it. Joseph was pulled out of the prison. He interpreted the dream, and then he was exalted to a new level within the kingdom. What Joseph did for Pharaoh is he then created storehouses. And these storehouses were used to create liquidity within ancient Kemet, right, within Egypt. So that way when the famine came, all the other nations had to come to Egypt. Why? Because they were liquid. Because they were liquid. Because they had cash. The book basically explained that the storehouse principle is the idea of being liquid intentionally. So that when opportunities arise that support you with creating more liquidity. (laughs) Right? That you can cash in. And become more wealthy because the more liquidity you have, the more wealth you can create. And my my fear is in our community, we're so focused on the facade of wealth. I want people to think this about me, that we never truly create wealth, like true liquidity. That then gives me options. You say, well... I got this cash over here. I could do this. I could do that. I could do this. 
one of the big problems my wife and I are having now is like, where do we invest? Like, so we like being thoughtful and prayerful about got this opportunity. But the reason why we're in that question is because we have liquidity. And by the way, shout out to my wife, wife, who was willing to sacrifice the facade of wealth for about how many years of marriage? I mean, we've been together 11 years now. What is it, 2024? Yeah, 11 years. And I promised her I would, you know, set her up the way she wanted to be set up. But shout out to her for having the patience and the vision to actually allow us to get liquid in a way where we could maintain and create more wealth. Because, by the way, I realized, like, if I had a woman who was like, I need it now, right? You get where I'm going? And, like, in my ear every day, wearing me down, might not be liquid. Brothers, like, man, be thoughtful about who you marry. (laughs) Be thoughtful because if they if they are living for the facade of wealth, they will drive you that way. Unless you can stand, man, you got to stand with an anchor and be willing to go again, like really be up against it because that woman will wear you down. So be thoughtful about who you marry. Is she is she all about the facade or is she about the real? Okay, so shout out to my wife because she was willing to actually accumulate wealth in a way that if people were like, well, where does he live? What does he drive? You know, you know, what does she what does she live? What does she drive? They might be like, well, they don't. I don't think so. Right. But we were just stacking and then boom. All right, here we go. Investments. To the point where you're like, all right. Now what? Now it ain't just, you know, what's hidden, but it, it can also, if you observe, can be seen in some ways. And what did that mean? That meant taking economy flights sometimes when you didn't have to. That meant foregoing new cars. That meant foregoing getting the house. I, I was telling a group of young men not too long ago, they were like, Linnell, you know, how did you get where you got? Um, these gentlemen work for one of my one of my companies, and um, they were working a an event for for my brother. And I was at the event, I was walking out, and they're like, "Man, you know, how did you?" And I was like, "Man, patience, patience, and being very clear about what I like, what I'm looking to build. I don't care about what you think. This is what I'm looking to build." Like, let me give you an example. When I told him, I was like, I just bought my first house ever. Now, that doesn't mean it's the, when I say the house I'm living in, like, that doesn't mean it's the first house I ever bought. But I didn't see a reason to live in a house. Like, I wanted to live in multi-unit buildings that helped me create wealth. So then it looked like we lived in an apartment. But if I was concerned about the facade, I would have never done that. I wasn't concerned. I didn't care about what people thought. I cared about the goal, the vision, clarity, clarity, clarity. Wealth is liquidity. And then purpose and spirituality, liquidity, liquidity. The beautiful thing about being liquid in your health, in your relationships, and in your finances is that it supports spiritual, and purposeful liquidity. The reason I was able to leave corporate America is because I didn't live in a big house. I hope this is hitting somebody. Like, I I didn't have a million-dollar mortgage. Could I afford one? I was an executive in corporate America. Like, yes. But I didn't want to get shackled. And so then it gave me the liquidity spiritually to leave the liquidity financially to leave. And then the liquidity in my relationships 
to build. All right. I didn't mean to spend that much time on liquidity, but I just felt like it was some things I don't want to wait on. I'm like, man, we need to hear this. All right. So true clarity. So I want to talk about last week. We talked about this idea of Amy, like aiming and and the way I believe I, I said it here was how to develop your aim and focus. And I gave the example of a good friend of mine who was one of the top top marksmen in his unit. And, you know, he shared with me the concept behind hitting your target every time. Right. And part of what he said was everything else has to go away. Like your focus just you're focused in. And before you even shoot the bullet, you see the bullet hit the target. And so it's like. It, it, it's it's very like it's all about clarity, like the ability to see clearly. Um, he shared, you know, how they look through the scope, get things clear that way. Pay attention to uh, weather, wind, the external environment, and that's part of what I want to talk about in terms of why I believe now is the time to take action. Like paying attention to our external environment as well, because there's certain seasons. There's a season for everything. It's funny, I just read through Ecclesiastes last week, and I was telling my brother yesterday, I'm like, man, like King Solomon was different. <laughs> like just in how he saw the world and, and how he laid it out, you know, the richest, wealthiest man of his time, um, one of the wealthiest men of all time. And he's like, vanity, van- all of it's vanity, like all of it's just, like, and it's like, you can say that when you got it. And it gives you a perspective. And the more you have, I think the more you, you begin to realize, like the more God blesses you, blesses you with, the more you begin to realize, like, this is nice. And it's funny, my brother and I were talking about this, too, in terms of being in the car business with high-end cars. He was like, you get to a point where I just want to be in a vehicle. I need to get somewhere. And it's like, well, that one's out. This one's out. I'll take that. I don't, and I don't care what I'm getting in. That. Like, so it's like it doesn't. That whole, like, it's like it doesn't matter. Now, it's nice, but it, it starts, you know, starts to like, ah, I got access to the nicest things or the nicest vehicles. And so if I'm not in the best of the best today, I'm still getting where I need to be. And we were just talking about that, um, how, you know, it wanes off the feeling of, <gasps> oh, it, it just wanes off over time. And you're like, oh, OK, yeah, Um. And I think all of us get that, you know, that that new feeling, new, new clothes. You know, you wear that, you know, that new shirt for the first time. You just like uh. and then, you know, the 20th time you wear it. It's like, oh, and you're looking at someone else's shirt now. You're looking at another shirt on the rack. And so how do we develop true clarity amidst all the distractions that are out there? Well, I want to I want to put this in terms of what I'm going through now in 2024. So at the end of 2023, I begin to set business goals. And one of these business goals was to scale to scale my business. And and the why, because it's very important that you have a why. The why is ultimately to create the freedom to spend more time with my family, um, in particular, my children. My son is six. My daughter is going on two. And so as they're developed, it's like, okay, man. And my wife is always reminded, like, we don't have that much time. And as I think about time, she's right. Like, it's it's going. My son is six, and he gets mad when I call him a little boy. And he's like, I'm not little. And I'm like, all right, man. But you are. And it's like, but it's, it's, he's, he's evolving and growing and he's becoming a different person every day. And, you know, that's important to us. So it's like, all right, I need to scale my business. I want to get get out of the business as much as possible and allow other people to run it. And that's difficult. <laughs> that's difficult. And it requires a different level of clarity and focus. And I find myself almost every day having to tune in 
to the vision and really look at what is it that I'm looking to generate here? Because there is so much resistance to this goal. And by the way, we all have resistance to our goals, but there's a lot of resistance to this goal. And what I'm finding is the biggest resistance is me. The biggest part of the resistance is me and how I'm processing this goal and this and what 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 needs to happen for me to transform into the leader that's running this scaled business that's leading, let me change my language, that's leading this scaled business that's running in many ways on its own. And it's difficult to do when it's your baby. And I looked at January 10th, I went down on a basketball court. I couldn't figure it out. Like, you know, everything with my health and I take care of myself. And then I realized, oh, man, the resistance to transforming my business, both financially, because part of this is about creating more revenue, but also in terms of how I'm in it, it's impacting almost every aspect of my life. And it clicked for me a couple of weeks ago when I was like, I got to go to physical therapy three times a week now. When that time could be spent on transforming the business. But then if my health, if I want to stay liquid in my health, right, we just talked about that, I have to do this. And so I'm being stretched, but it's also showing me why I should do it. Like why this is important. And so then what I'm doing is, Almost every day I walk into the office, I'm envisioning what it is that I'm creating. Like, what am I creating? And I'm using that to dictate the how. I want to be very clear about this. I'm using the goal to actually inform my actions. So every day, going to the office, I have that moment, strategy moment, where I'm like, okay. Sometimes I have it written down from the night before. Here are the things to work on. I even question that. Because, you know, I was tired when I left. So let's get focused on the vision, get clarity around what I'm looking to create. And from that place, what are the top priorities? And I'm sharing it. I want to share my process because even in doing that, there's resistance and there are things that are going undone. So I'm like, man, what's going on here? Like, what's happening? I was having a conversation with, excuse me, my coach. And we were just kind of discussing this, and it was like, well, how much of the easy action are you leaving on the table? Like the little small things that you can do. And it's like, ooh, yeah. Um, you know, sometimes we get so focused on the really big actions that we completely ignore, like, oh, I can knock these things out right away and be moving forward. But it comes from a lack of clarity, like a, a real lack of clarity around What is it that I'm looking to create and what will move me forward? The other piece, too, is like getting caught up in the how. And so part of what I'm looking to do in my business this year is like I want to 2x it. I've shared this already. I want to 2x the business. Now, I have no idea how (laughs) this is going to happen. And by the way. We're almost through the first quarter of 2024, and I'm not sure how. And and here's the funny thing. Like in revenue, I'm trending behind 2023, partly because I'm working like on the business and not in the business. Okay, but I also know based on the vision, that's the right thing to do. And I want to be very clear about this. This is why how gets us in trouble. So I don't know how this is going to be done, but I but what I'm doing is I'm working what's in front of me, like I'm working what's in front of me. And so this is why true clarity is important because I must be clear, like extremely clear about what the goal is. And so the conversation I'm having today is assuming that you all are setting goals. If you're not, let me tell you this. If you're not, I know there's resistance to becoming a Slayer Goals member because I know what the Slayer Goals members are getting. Like, like, and pop, like we had a phenomenal session last week. Like I know what they're getting. 
But if you need support, there's no better way. I'm, this is not a Slayer Goals commercial. Go to SlayerGoals.com to become a member. I just want to put it out there for anybody who's listening where you're not really crystallizing your goal-setting opportunities. And when I talk about clarity, you're like, well, what exactly does he mean? Like, what I'm talking about is, like, I'm very clear. Like, the statements for my goals are clear. The vision for my goals are clear. And so now that is the area to focus in. If it's not clear, I would challenge you to stop taking action and get clear. Because the other thing is I believe often we're taking the wrong action or we're so used to being busy, we're taking busy action. And that's why, why you're not, that's why you're exhausted and you're not getting where you intend to be because you're in busy action versus purposeful, like real, true, purposeful action that is linked to a very clear vision. So when we talk about clarity, this is why I believe this notion of true clarity. I am so clear on where I intend to go with my health. It is crystal clear to me. You don't have to know how. Let, let, let me, like, you said, Linnell, you talked about this last week. There are some things, you know, during the pandemic, they were like, you got to come back for another shot. <laughs> There's sometimes, you're like, you need a repeat. I know I talked about this last week. I want to be so clear. That's probably a bad example. But y'all get my point, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, like, we need to be, sometimes you need to be inoculated all over again. So you really understand this. The first step, the first step in taking full control of your, of your life is clarity on where you intend to go. The first step. My fear is often we'll create an intention and then we'll run off and start taking action and then we'll run into a wall because now we don't know what else to do. And so we start asking, well, how do I get over this hump? And we get stuck. And the reason we get stuck is because we weren't really clear in the first place. Give me something you're up to all day. Like, let's, like, I'll use you as an example. Like, what's something that you're up to right now? That might be a go. I'm putting you on the spot, but it might be a go. <clears throat> okay, five projects. So you want to complete five projects this upcoming month. Okay. All right, and I guess this is in the realm of work. So there's five work projects. Okay. By when do you want to be done with that? April 25th. Okay. So come April 26th, have you established <clears throat> in your mind's eye what everything looks like. Everything looks like in your business, looks like in your cash flow, looks like in terms of what these projects are intended to create. Like, are you really clear on how this is supposed to look April 26? Mm. On a scale of 1 to 10. And by the way, I get it if you're not, right? <clears throat> but on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being I'm not clear at all, 10 being it's crystal clear, I can see the color. Where would you say you are right now on what you intend to create within the next 45 days? That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would say about eight. About an eight. Okay. Yeah. How do you get to a 10? What do you need to do to get to a 10? Yeah, okay. So get clear on the details. So mm -hmm. what would take you from an eight to a 10 in your vision is getting clear on the details. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. The details are very important. Yeah. And I'm going to share with you all why. The details are, are critically important. All right, because when we get stuck, when we run into a wall, one of one of the things that the details do for us is it actually shows us what the next move should be. The details like the details actually point us in the right direction. And this is why true clarity, like clarity is so important. So in our day's case, you know, next 45 days, he's very clear on what he wants to create, what he wants to generate. And he's working on that. The vision is at an eight, which is pretty good. Um, the question I asked is, how do you get to a 10? He's like, okay, I need to gain more clarity on certain details. And I'm like, all right, we'll get clear on those details because more than likely the next 45 days, what would you say 
is the possibility that you run up against a situation where you're like trying to figure out how you're going to do something. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty possible, I mean, pretty likely. Most likely, yeah. most likely. Okay. What most of us would do in that situation is stop and start looking for solutions or instruction. And what I'm saying is instead of stopping to look for solutions and instructions, you consult the vision. That's what I'm saying. You consult the vision. Now, nine out of ten of my clients, nine out of ten of my clients, whenever they're having issues with a goal, with something they're looking to create, almost always, almost always, there is a lack of clarity on the vision. When it, like, it's almost like a hack. When I'm working with new coaches and they're like, what do I do if my client is confused about their goals? Or what do I do? Like, man, I have these clients and it seems like they're going in circles. Now, what do I do? I'm like, have you asked them about their vision? It's like the, the, the number one life coaching hack is to say, well, what does your vision say? Right? And if they're like, well, I don't know. Do we need to do work on vision? Like, you get where I'm going? The number one hack. The number one reason people aren't creating what they intend to create as quickly as they intend to create it or people are stuck is because they can't see where they're going anymore. They don't have true clarity. Like, what is it that you're looking to build and how is it going to fit into your life? So let me give you another example. Yesterday, my wife and I, um, we had a business conversation with someone else. And there's just this new opportunity. Thank God for liquidity, right? Because we're trying to figure out with this opportunity why other people aren't playing the game. Like, why aren't other people going for this? And it's like, well, the capital it takes to start. Oh, okay. Makes sense, right? People aren't liquid. All right, cool. So my wife and I are discussing, like, how, how do we get into this? Like, how do we get into this game? So my wife called me after the conversation. She's like, so what do you need now? And I, clarity. I need to figure out. Like, part of for me is I got plenty of business questions, but now how does this fit into our lives? I need to be able to see it. How are we going to function as owners of this type of business? And how does that impact the larger vision that we're up to? Like how do I take something that's brand new and begin to insert it into the current vision in a way that is crystal, listen to me, crystal clear. Sometimes folks are like, Linnell, you know, I think you take too time, you know, long, you got to process things. It's like, no, I'm taking the time I need so I can see it in my mind's eye. Because if I can't see it in my mind's eye, it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. If I can't figure out how this fits into our lives and I can actually see what life is like owning this business as it's functioning and what we're having to do, like perfect example, yesterday I was thinking about it and I'm like, okay, so we run in this business. We're going to take four to five vacations a year. That ain't going to stop. By the way, the reason people get themselves in situations, like life-altering situations, is because they didn't envision it. They didn't look at it and say, okay, what do I need? So it's interesting because we were talking to the, to the person who you know, was sharing the business opportunity with us. And I was like, mm, I was thinking out loud. I said, one of the things I'm going to need is an operations manager. She said, you don't need an app- operations manager. Like, Yes, I do, because I'm taking 45 vacations a year. <laughs> you get where I'm going? Yes, I do. I need somebody who's on the ground handling this, right? Because I ain't, I ain't changing my lifestyle. Crystal, I, I want to be clear, like crystal clear. Crystal clear. And so just in case you don't believe me, I, and I respect that if you're cynical, if you know, if you know, you're suspicious. I, I, I respect that. Let's go to a text to someone who is incredibly smart and has proven themselves to be correct via this text over a few decades. All right. So I'm going to go to the text by Dr. Maxwell Maltz, who is the author of Psycho Cybernetics. Um, phenomenal book, by the way. Let, let me say this. 
I give out these book titles. And one of the books I've talked about a lot is Think and Grow Rich. And it's funny because I've been talking about this. I've talked about Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, a lot. Anyway, I had a client who I've been working with for years, by the way. Um, and they finally started reading the book. <laughs> and I get this text message. If she's listening, yeah, I'm talking about you, right? I get this text message. She's like, Linnell, oh, my God, this book is so good. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I only been talking about it for a decade on the radio, right? <laughs> anyway. I just had to say that because I'll, I'll put these books out there. You know, people are like, ah, da, 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 you know, and uh, I get if you're reading a really good novel, I believe you should, you know, read creative things. But at some point, you know, you got to or if you're reading other non, I'll put it like this. If you're reading other nonfiction, read, read some of these books because these are pro- like it's proven nonfiction. Some of these folks are copying off. Off of, you know, Think and Grow Rich, a lot of these other books are copying. Like, it's like they're versions of. Psycho-Cybernetics, they're versions of. You get where I'm going? Anyway. So, um, Psycho-Cybernetics. I want to read a passage from the book Psycho-Cybernetics real quick. And this is from Chapter 2. Of psycho cybernetics. And all of this is talking, we're talking about avoiding the how blockade, right? Why it's so important to get true clarity. And a lot of times we're so, you know, we feel so behind. Oh, I got, I got to get to it that we'll write the goal and start running to get in action. And then we start tripping over ourselves eventually. And we feel behind because of enough, 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 not enough context or the should, shouldn't cognitive distortion. I should have done this a long time ago. I should know how to do this. And so we start running real fast. And then later when we're tripping up, we can't figure out why. And the reason why is because you're not clear. You're not clear. So Dr. Maxwell Maltz in chapter two of psycho cybernetics says that we all have a success mechanism inside of us. The reason you're listening right now, the reason this show is compelling to you, The reason you find it interesting is because you have a success mechanism. And that success mechanism is driving you to accomplish something. I believe it's something that the creator put inside of us so that we would pursue our purpose. So that we would make impact. And in order for me to make impact on a on just on a basic level, I have to be successful in some capacity. Okay, and so he put that inside of us. And so we're wired to be successful. Dr. Maxwell Maltz talks about it as a success mechanism that's inside of us. So he says your built-in success mechanism must have a goal or target. So last week we talked about taking aim at a target, getting very clear. So your built-in success mechanism must have a target. And... This target must be conceived of as already in existence. So if it's already in existence, that means I have to be able to see it in my life, working in my life, how it would work in my life, right? Go back to I need an operations manager. Why? Because I see myself getting a phone call on the beach from the operations manager saying, hey, such and such just happened. I wanted to let you know. I'm on the beach, by the way, on vacation. You know, my children are playing near the water. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Thanks for letting me know. Do X, Y, and Z. I hang up and continue to enjoy myself. Like, I see that, right? So I I see, I I really want us to see, like, by the way, this is before I take action. My wife is like, hey, have you read the business stuff I put together? No, not yet. She's like, okay, baby, when are you going to read it? When I get clear. (laughs) Is this making sense? When I get crystal clear on how this is going to fit into our lives how this is going to work in our lives. Like, you get where I'm going? When I get clear. So, the target must be conceived of as already in existence. What did, what did my, my buddy who's a marksman say? I see the bullet go through the target. Already in existence. All right? Either in actual or potential form. It operates by either steering you to a goal already in existence or discovering something already in existence. But either way, 
it must be held as already in existence. Okay. Do not be discouraged because the means whereby you need to create this may not be apparent. Let me read this again. Let me read, let me read this again. Because I believe that a lot of us aren't creating because we're like, well, I don't see how I'm going to do it. We get stuck, and again, avoiding the how blockade. So the author of this book, this is not Linnell speaking now. I said my piece. The author of this book is saying, do not be discouraged because the means whereby you intend to create this may not be apparent. Linnell, I don't know how. It may not be, like, don't get discouraged by not knowing how. It is the function of the automatic mechanism to supply the means whereby when you supply the goal. Okay, let's translate that. What he's saying here is it is the function of the success mechanism. Who put the success me mechanism in you? The creator. So let's say it's the function of the spirit. <laughs> I hope this is making sense to y'all. It is the function of the spirit to supply the means whereby, to supply the how, when you supply the goal, when you supply the vision. So when I supply the vision, then that is what allows the creator to activate my spirit to show me how. I think one of the reasons goal setting is so difficult is because goal setting requires faith. It requires faith 101. It does. I honestly believe that one of the reasons many people, like they see the opportunity for Slayer Goals, they're like, okay, I can become a member, but they don't believe they're going to do anything with it. And because of that, like think about that. I don't want to waste $37 a month. Like that right there, the lack of belief, you'll, ne you'll never do it. There are other people who see opportunity. Let's take Slayer Goals out the picture. Other people who see opportunity, and they're like, wow, that'd be amazing. That would be amazing. But then they can't see themselves. They can't even see themselves with that level of success. They can't even believe. I, can, I can't even believe I can get that. And so they never do. And here it is in this secular book, by the way. Like, he isn't using this language. I'm translating it. He's breaking down how goals are accomplished. And what he says, he doesn't use the word faith. All he's saying is automatic mechanism, right? We've Okay, the spirit. It is the function of the automatic mechanism inside of you, the success mechanism, to supply the means whereby, the how, when you get clear. Some of us won't even let ourselves get clear because... We are battling, battling, what's the best thing to call it? The fog of doubt. Like the fog of doubt is blocking your clarity. And so then I would say that you need to go work on your faith one-on-one. -on -one. Like you need to take a faith one-on-one -on -one course. Maybe that's the next thing I'll talk about. So he goes on to say, think in terms of the end result. How many times have I said, start with the end in mind? Like, I promise you guys, I, just, I don't just make this stuff up. It is based on the many years of reading, the many years of research, the many years of personal, like personal implementation, and then watching what I thought was impossible materialize, <laughs> right? And going, Wow. That two plus two equal formula works. Wow. And then doing it again. And I can go through, those of you who know my story, I can go through example after example, not having a bachelor's degree in corporate America and becoming an executive. 
I supplied it to my brain. I, I got clear on the goal. I could see myself in the executive in the executive role. I saw myself functioning that way. I took the I then I learned the how, like the how came to me. I took the actions, and despite the rules, the processes, and the policies, I became an executive. So so this process breaks rules. Linnell, well, you know, they, they, that's not possible because they have this law on the books. And so I'm trying to, you know, I would love to create that policy, but this law is on the books. So? So? When, don't you realize that you have the creative capacity to break rules legally? How do you, like where the policy is reversed for you. You don't have to do nothing legal. The policy is reversed for you. But we let that stuff get in. Well, there's nothing there that lets me do it. That's okay. Can you see it? If you can see it, then the how will come to you, but not before you're clear. Then he goes on to say this. This is my favorite part. By the way, anybody who's a client that's listening, you've heard this before. Almost everybody, every client hears me read this. The means by which your success mechanism works often takes care of itself and does so effortlessly when you supply the vision to the brain. <laughs> Effort. See, the other thing is I believe that we're so used to working hard. We're so, we're so used to working hard that when the house shows up, we don't believe it. We're like, well, that can't be true. Things are hard for me. <laughs> that can't, it can't be that easy. Versus just saying, like, for instance, the way this opportunity came to my wife or not, and we're taking a look at it, like what we could say is, no, 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 it can't be that easy. <laughs> it just can't, no, no, it just can't be that, that, no, no, and we can just go the other direction because it just can't be that easy. I wonder how many blessings we've passed up because it showed up effortlessly and we didn't trust it. And I know this to be true because when I was going through my coaching course, one of the things they asked us to do is to go out into the street and give people money and watch what happens, right? And I remember doing this. We, we went out to the street and I walked up to somebody. I tried to give them $5. They're like, no, 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 man. No, 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 no. They wouldn't take the blessing. It can't come that easy. Now, there are some cases where that's true, right? <laughs> like, be careful, brother. She, you know, like, oh, I love you. Everything right. You just met me. Everything right now. Like, you might get set up. And you know, like, 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 let's, you know, certain things. Let's say when you're sinning and it's coming easy, be careful, <laughs> right? Like, I think that's the easy, like, boom, put that over there. But when, when you are doing what you know the creator has you to do and it shows up, you better trust it. I think that's a very clear, you know, and you know, you know when you're doing right and when you're doing wrong. Okay. So Maxwell Maltz then goes on to say that it will be the, how this will take care of itself does so effortlessly when the vision is supplied to the brain. He then says the precise, check this out, when the vision is clear, when you have clarity, the precise action steps will come to you without stress, tension, or worry about how you're going to accomplish the result you seek. See, that's, we ain't used to that. <laughs> We're not used. Did you say without stress, sir? Did you say without tension? Like, I, I believe that sometimes we're so used to the stress, tension, and worry that when the idea comes, so let's go back to my business, right? This past week, it hit me. This is what you need to do. Now, I came without stress, tension, and worry. And so I better believe that thing. You get where I'm going? But because we're so used to being under tension and stress, when it shows up, we don't believe it. Well, that can't be it. And Think and Grow Rich Napoleon, this is why I say read these books, man, because they all have similar principles. They call them different things, right? <clears throat> Here, 
Dr. Maxwell Maltz is saying it shows up effortlessly, comes without stress and tension. And Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill calls it auto-suggestion. Like when, it's, when, you, when the goal, when the vision is clear, all of a sudden, things instruct you on what to do next. Uh, he calls it auto-suggestion. Your environment tells you what to do next. You'll see a sign. It'll literally say, go here. I'm like, okay, let me walk over. Let me go inside this. Let me go inside this shop. Let's see. Like, it's, just, it's auto-suggestion. And what he says is, the sign was always there. Napoleon Hill says the sign was always there. What wasn't there before was the vision. So now that you have the vision, you see the sign. But without the vision, you never see the sign. Listen to this. Many people make the mistake of interfering with their success mechanism by demanding how before a vision is clearly established. And you know why we do this? I believe from the years I've been working with people, I believe the reason we do this is because we're all trapped in this time context. I don't have time. I I don't have enough time. So when there's an opportunity or we we see something for our lives, we don't want to waste time. And so if I start down this path and I don't know how, wouldn't that be a waste of time, Linnell? Let me tell you something. One of the things that I'm learning, one of the things that I've learned, they ain't learning. I've learned it, okay? Like this lesson is clear to me. That almost everything that I intend to create powerfully happens counterintuitively. Almost everything I intend to create, it happens like right now. I, I can tell you how I created a firm where I'm a strategic advisor to CEO and C-suite leaders. I can tell you how in hindsight. What I can't do is tell you that I knew how when I had the vision. I had no, I had no clue. But when I got the vision, all of a sudden there were signs that said, go here. And so that's what I did. I went in that direction, and then the opportunities began to manifest. Is this, I hope this is making sense. Now, Somebody's saying, are you telling us to go blindly? No, 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 no. Anybody in Slayer Goals knows that we, get, we take the goal, we create reverse milestones, right? And for everything that we know how to do, we're taking those actions. But there's always going to be something that you're not, you know, you're not clear about. I just don't know. I'm not clear. Let's continue reading. He then goes on to say, after you formed a mental image of the goal you seek to create, after you formed the mental image, the goal you seek to create, the how will come to you. Not before. Now, think about this. He says, you don't have to go out and look for it. (laughs) It will come to you. I can't tell you. How many times I've been, I could be hanging out with the family, the vision's clear. My son could be watching a cartoon, playing with the baby, and something happens in the cartoon. That's it. My son goes, you like that, daddy? I like that episode. I love that episode, legend. Right? He's, He's happy that I'm happy, and I'm happy that I got my how. And it came from the unlikeliest place, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cartoon. But something that's being said, like the leader was saying something. I'm like, that's exactly what needs to happen here. That's it. Boom. The how comes to you, not before. So then he goes on to say, this is hard for us, by the way. Remain calm and relaxed. Some of us, like, some of y'all good at it. You're too good at it. (laughs) And some of us don't know how to do it, to just be calm and relaxed. 
This is why I was speaking to a group of leaders in Dallas a few weeks ago. And among the team, they identified that that team never takes all their paid time off. And I had a conversation with them. These are the executives. I'm like, your people are emulating you. And it's not just about the time you take off. It's about what you get when you're calm and relaxed. It's about what shows up for you when you're calm and relaxed. It's about what comes to you. Because what happens is when you're calm and relaxed and you're clear on where you're going, you have clarity. The how. Why do my wife and I get away four to five times a year? Linnell, you always taking a vacation. It's because that's when the how. We'll be sitting on the beach and she'll be like, babe, you know what? You know how we can do? That's when the house shows up. Come calm. I'm relaxed. What I told the leaders, I said, if you all were race car drivers, many of you all would have slid off the tracks years ago. And they're like, what do you mean? And I said, because race cars have to take pit stops. You look at Formula One. You look at the Indy 500, any of those, the fastest car, the car that won first place had to stop multiple times throughout that race. Think about that. Like the idea is to be top speed, top speed throughout the, like going around that track, 200 plus miles an hour. (sighs) And the only way that driver can win is that he has to plan his pit stops. Sometimes the team will call him in. Hey, it's time to come in. I'm in front. I don't care. It's time to come in. It's not about winning laps. It's about winning the race. It's time to come in. Stop the car. And when he comes in, car stops, new tires, They squeeze, you know, little electrolytes into his mouth. Refuel. Windshield clean. Go. Boom. Now he can hit the curves faster. It ain't often I'm going to get on here and tell you to slow down. It ain't often I'm going to come on here and tell you to stop. But I I think when it comes to getting clarity, we got to pause. Like, are you clear or are you moving so fast that it's wrecking your clarity? Let me end by reading the last sentence in this caption from Dr. Maxwell Maltz. He says, remain calm and relax. The answers will come. Then he goes on to say, any attempt to force the ideas to come will not work. Some of us, we, you know, we're so we're so used to working hard, to pushing hard that we try to employ the same thing on our dreams and our goals. And we're trying to figure out why is it not working? He's like, well, you can't force it. It won't work. He goes on to say, as Brian Tracy wrote in all mental workings, Effort defeats itself. I got two minutes. Next week, I'll, I'll tap into this in, in, more, in more detail. But there's no time. I believe this is the best time in 22 and 4. Right now, to get clear and start taking action. Get clear, start taking action. I don't believe, I don't know what's coming, but in my spirit, it's like, folks need to know it's time to get clear and start taking action. Because if you don't have momentum by summer, if you don't have momentum by fall, the fog might be too thick. The fog might be too thick. Hey, my inspired peoples, Linnell Harris here, certified ontological coach and trainer, I'm so excited that you're watching the channel. By the way, did you know you can catch the show live at 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. every Sunday morning? You can. All you have to do is go to my Facebook stream, 
Coach Linnell Harris Catch the Stream Live, or you can listen to the radio show via iHeart at WVON 1690 AM. But since you're here, if you love the content, I ask that you share it, like this particular video, and subscribe to the channel. I hope you're having a great day.